So welcome to Legal London everyone. My name is Joanne. I'm a Blue Badge Tourist Guide and also a lawyer and today we're exploring a really beautiful part of London we call the Inns of Court. Described by Charles Dickens as a haven of tranquility right in the heart of this busy city. And I'm currently standing in front of one of the oldest buildings in London. This is Temple Church. Dates back to 1185. Built by an organisation called the Knights Templar. But they're long gone. These days, this is the home of lawyers. There are four inns of court and two of them have their offices right here. Every barrister, which means a specialist trial lawyer, has to be a member of one of the four inns of court. So Middle Temple and Inner Temple here and we're going to be exploring Lincoln's Inn and Gray's Inn. A visit to the Inns of Court is always one of the highlights of criminal justice tours in London. We're standing in front of the Royal Courts of Justice. This amazing structure was built in the 19th century. The architect was a man called George Edmund Street and he had always wanted to build a cathedral but no one ever asked him. So when they commissioned him to build the Royal Courts of Justice, he built them to look a bit like a cathedral. Now they're the main civil courts in London when private parties are suing other private parties. So things like contractual disputes, negligence, family law, libel law, judicial review of executive decisions. But for our purposes, it's also the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal Criminal Division and the Court of Appeal Civil Division. If you are convicted of a criminal offence, a criminal court, your lawyer may advise you you have grounds of appeal against conviction or sentence or both. And if you do go to appeal, your appeal is heard within this building and when we do our tours through London we often go inside the Royal Courts of Justice and we can even go and watch sometimes proceedings taking place with the judges and the lawyers wearing their traditional wigs and gowns. We are very traditional in this country in various ways and one of our strange traditions is we still wear wigs in court and if you look in the window here you can see two different wigs the one on the left is a barrister's wig that's what a barrister will wear when arguing a case in court and the one on the right more traditional it's a ceremonial wig we call that a full bottomed wig it's nicknamed a spaniel wig and you can see why because the ears are like a spaniel dog these are made of horse hair and they are handmade. Now what's the reason behind wearing the wigs? Well it's actually history. Back in the 1600s we had a king called Charles I who abused his power. We ended up executing him in 1649. So we didn't have a monarchy, we had a republic. His son decided he wasn't going to stick around here because he might be next for the job. And so he went to live in Europe and he spent a period of time living at the court of Louis XIII of France. Louis XIII had a bald patch, so he used to wear a wig to cover up his bald patch. And of course, if the king is doing something, then everybody around the king does the same to make the king feel comfortable. So it was fashionable at the court of Louis XIII to wear wigs. Now, by 1660, we got fed up with our republic. It wasn't very successful for all sorts of reasons. So Parliament decided to restore the monarchy. We can't have our old king back, so we've chopped his head off. We will instead invite his son to come back from exile. Charles comes back from France, becomes King Charles II and brings the tradition of wearing wigs with him. Back then, all of the upper classes, the aristocracy, would wear wigs. But wigs fell out of fashion in the 1700s. Lawyers don't follow fashion, they just carry on wearing them. Lincoln's Inn 
And the building behind me is Lincoln's Inn Great Hall, the dining hall of Lincoln's Inn. A very important part of the community, the dining hall. Believe it or not, dining is part of the training to become a barrister. If you decide you want to be a barrister, you will get a place at law school to do a one-year course called the Bar Professional Training Course. And during your one year at law school, you will visit your inn a total of 12 times for what are called qualifying sessions. They used to require 24 of these and they used to call them dinners. A few years ago they reduced it to 12 and they renamed them qualifying sessions. Sounds a bit more academic, doesn't it? There will be an academic element, but at least some of the qualifying sessions take the form of a formal dinner. And if you know Harry Potter, it's a bit like Hogwarts. You've got the head table at the top and the long benches leading away, which is where the students will sit having their dinner, wearing their gowns. Now each of the inns have different traditions. Lincoln have an interesting tradition, which is when they toast the Queen, they don't stand up. Now in this country, it's customary during a formal dinner to toast the Queen. We call it the loyal toast. Everyone will stand up, raise a glass to her majesty the Queen and then sit down again. When they do it here, they don't stand up. And the reason is, they had a visitor. Back in the 1660s, King Charles II. He's the one I mentioned brought the Whigs over from France. He was a bit of a party animal, sometimes known as the Merry Monarch. He came to dine in the dining hall and during the course of the meal, I'm afraid to say, everybody had too much wine to drink. And so when it came to the time to toast the king, they were too drunk to stand up. And so Charles gave them permission to toast him sitting down. Ever since then, they claim the right to toast the monarch sitting. of court this one is called Gray's Inn and behind me is the dining hall of Gray's Inn and it dates back to the 1500s. If you look closely at the brickwork you might be able to notice that some of the brickwork is old however the kind of closest to me here is much newer it's post-war. During the Second World War London was bombed we call it the Blitz London was bombed from the 7th of September 1940 right through until the 10th of May of 1941. And the last night of the Blitz was a massive raid. And unfortunately, this inn was hit quite badly. The interior of this hall was gutted. Now at the end of the Second World War, the American Bar Association, the Association of American Lawyers, helped to pay for the rebuild of the dining hall and the restoration of the entire inn. And as a tribute to that, if you look closely in the bottom light of the window here, can you see the American Eagle? The American Eagle as a thank you to the American Bar Association for that support. Of course, we were close allies during the Second World War and we have such close connections in our legal systems. Now, if you look round the rest of the square here, we have the library covered in ivy, and have a look at the brickwork there and you can see it's light red brick all the way around the square it's post-war light red brick until we come to a building which stands out as looking very different because it's dark brown brick that survived the blitz and that's where charles dickens used to work charles dickens 19th century novelist started out his career as a law clerk. He used to have an office on the first floor there. He wasn't very happy in his work. He used to throw cherry pips out the window up passers-by. After three years as a law clerk, he then went on to become a journalist and eventually the novelist for which he is of course now famous. Now if you read any Dickens or watched any television adaptations of Dickens, you will know that Dickens didn't have a very favourable impression of lawyers or the law got that from personal experience working here in Grazing.
everywhere. The building you can see under scaffolding there, I promise you underneath that is Big Ben, the famous clock tower. It's part of a much larger building, which you can see behind me. It's our Parliament building, officially known as the Palace of Westminster, but known to the British public as the House of Parliament. And it's the seat of our legislature, House of Commons at this end of the building, House of Lords, the upper house at that end of the building. Now, House of Lords used to be the highest court in the land, what they called the Law Lords, until 2009, when someone obviously thought, hmm, that doesn't really work, does it? Because the principle of separation of powers means you shouldn't really have people sitting making laws who are then going to interpret the legislation that they have taken part in creating. So in 2009, the Law Lords moved out of the House of Lords across the road into this building over here. This building is our Supreme Court, opened in 2009, 12 Supreme Court Justices. They always sit as five, seven or nine. You have to retire in this country at 70 or 75, depending upon when you first became a judge. The other thing Americans very often ask me is how do you become a Supreme Court Justice? Well, it's not a political appointment the way it is in the United States of America. Here it's a judicial appointment. It's appropriate that we finish at the highest court in the land. I really hope you've enjoyed our little tour today. I hope it's given you a little bit of a flavour of what you will enjoy when you come to London. And I cannot wait to be able to show you around London when you come here. Mm -hmm. Hope to see you soon. Take care.